We're going to figure out the electric field for continuous charge distributions. Um, first thing we should do is, is review, you know, what is the electric field for point charges. So we'll talk about that. Well, then we're going to take a continuous charge distribution. Like if you take charge and you smear it over a continuous area or volume or, or a line. And, uh, and then, of course, we're going to have to use integral calculus to do that. Whenever, whenever you see this, this continuous, that's, you know, you, that's a clue. You're going to have to use calculus. Um, and then in order to do, uh, to do the, the integral, though, we're going to have to talk about charge densities. Now, remember, we've dealt with densities before. Um, we dealt with linear area and volume mass densities when we were doing um, center of mass calculations and rotational inertia calculations. Now it's going to be for pretty much the same thing, but we're going to do it to figure out electric fields for, for continuous charge distributions. So remember we said that the electric field is equal to the electric force divided by some test charge. And remember this, this test charge, it's a positive charge. Um, so really what we're doing is we're saying, hey, at some location in space, what force is an electric uh, charge going to feel because of, of, of that position in space? That's what the electric field tells us. Well, for a point charge, um, it was K uh, uh, Q over Q uh, times Q naught over R squared in the R hat direction. That's Coulomb's law divided by Q naught. And so the Q naught cancels, and we got K. <clears throat> uh, Q over R squared. Now that's for an individual uh, uh, charge. And then of course to figure out for a whole bunch of uh, point charges you just sum them. You just figured out uh, this for each individual charge and you added them all together, the principle of superposition. Well what if I've got a blob and this blob it's just smeared with positive charge. So I just take positive charge and I just extend it all through this surface. And I want to know what is the electric field at some location in space? Okay. Well, um, let's say I want to know what is the electric field right here? So I put my little positive test charge there. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Let me know as soon as that goes off the camera. Okay. So here's a little here's a little test charge, you know, short and stout. And then we want to figure out, you know, what's what's the electric field here? Well, what we do is we pick a little chunk of uh, charge over there and we call it DQ. So there's my little uh, my little charge. And here's my R for that. And then I'm just going to sum these all together. Well, if we said that E is equal to the sum of KQ over R squared, and we'll put the little I's in there, in the RI direction. Now we're going to take this and sum all these little or instead of Q sub I, we're going to use DQ. And instead of this, we're going to use an integral sign. We're going to sum them all together. And so E is going to be equal to K DQ over R squared. And then, of course, we're going to have to have um, some R hat direction here. And by the way, this R hat direction is what makes this thing a pain in the neck. So in fact, it's because of this, we have to be really careful about what kind of charge distributions uh, we, we choose to tackle using uh, integral calculus because we really can only do it for, for highly symmetric charge distributions. Um, so um, well, there's no way we can do this integral because dq and r are, are variables, and they're different variables. So we need to uh, we need to uh, you know modify these so that they're the same variable. And we do that using um, 
uh, densities, charge densities. Um, if we have charge, if my extended body is a line like this, so let's, let's call this uh, linear charge density, the charge is going to be spread out over some line like this. And this charge density, if it's a, uh, it's, we're going to call it uh, lambda. And lambda is the amount of charge per unit length. OK? Now, for right now, let's just stick with, uh, with uniform charge densities. Later on, we're going to have charge densities that are actually functions of the length. But for right now, let's just, just assume that they're constant. And so what you would do is you would say, all right, well, uh, dq, if I took a little tiny chunk of this charge, and that's what I want to substitute, I want to substitute this uh, in here, it's going to be equal to lambda times uh, dr. If we make, you know, from here to here a, a change in, in length, we can call it dl or dx or whatever you want. Um, but it's a it's a length. So the linear charge density times some kind of length. I'll just call it dr. Um, now I can substitute that in here, and I've got an integral I can I can evaluate because the variables are the same. So that's for a linear charge density. Don't get. Don't get fancy on me, you guys. Um, well, OK, this class, this class assumes that you're in first year calculus, OK? Second year, you can use second year calculus uh, techniques if you're, if you're there. Go ahead, I don't care. But um, I'm going to, this is the way uh, I'm going to handle it for everybody else. Now, for area, you could have like some area where we've got charge smeared over an area. Now let's just assume that that area is uh, a uniform. Uh, we have a uniform area density for right now. Um, we use sigma for that. Now remember, we, we did this with mass, right? We had mass per unit length. We used lambda. We used lambda mass per unit length. But now we're just using charge now instead of mass. And so sigma is the charge per unit area. OK. So you know, dq is going to be equal to sigma times some dA. Now the area, you're going to have to do more work to get area in terms of r. And you're going to, I'm going to assign you some example problems to do where you're going to do just that. Um, and then for, for volumes, you know, you might have like a sphere or something like this. And in this sphere, there's um, charge spread out over some volume. It doesn't have to be a sphere, although a lot of the applications we're going to use are going to be spheres. And here uh, we use the variable rho to represent the charge per unit volume. So our little chunk of charge that we're going to pick to evaluate the, uh, the electric field um, but, you know, through integration. So our little chunk of charge, dq, is going to be equal to rho times a volume element. Now the volume element, again, you're going to have to do some work to change that volume element into um, a uh, into a, a, a form that you can actually evaluate the integral. And uh, so you'll be using um, these. You're all, whenever you use uh, an integral 
to figure out the electric field like this, you're going to have to uh, somewhere take this charge and change it into the same variable as this. You might even change this. Like you might change the uh, R into X. Um, but these two things have to be the same variable. And I mean, if they're not, then you can't evaluate it. And, and this is how you do it. So the best way to do that is by working lots of example problems. So that's what we're going to do next.